Hey, this is Dane with Full Throttle Batteries. Today I want to go over some general safety practices while building lithium ion packs. This is a commercially available brand. Um, I'm not 100% sure where it came from, but it's one of my friends that I'm doing a recover for. Uh, and then this is one that I had built a while ago. So uh, all three of these actually are from the same owner and uh, he flies them all equally same. He's had them about the same time. So uh, the reason that's important is I'm going to show you a couple things in regards to battery safety and just general building practices. So if you can see we got wavy plates <clears throat> going on here um, and what that's from is the nickel strip is very straight and very flat whenever you weld it on um, but what happens is the heat distorts these greatly as you can see um, the manufacturer obviously did not put those on like that so that is from the heat. So, how do you avoid that? It's pretty difficult. Um, really, the only way to do it is to use very, very thick strips. Um, unfortunately, a lot of hobbyist type of welders can't handle um, how thick these strips are. So, you should practice or try to get as thick of a strip as you can possibly get where your welder works. Also study up and practice on your pulse settings because you could have the current capability and have uh, too low of a pulse setting. So anyway, that is one thing to watch for. Like I said, these have about the same, about the same hours on them. Okay, safety tip. Uh, in general building practice item number two and this is definitely in regards to safety uh, notice I have insulator rings on these 21700 cells and this one does not why is that important so if you can see the wavy plate has caused especially this plate and a little bit on this one to start dropping down onto the cell itself. The reason these are distorted is because of heat. If you are overheating this plate and you are dropping this plate down onto the cell itself, you can burn and melt away this heat shrink. Uh, here's a great example of one that had blown up on another customer. This is an A-line. I did a video on this last time. Um, the heat made this heat shrink blow away. So, what happens if this heat shrink blows away is you have an exposed can. The can is the negative side of this cell. If this plate, which is soldered or welded to the positive, comes in contact with the negative, this is what happens. It explodes, burns up, bad, bad. So, always, always use fish paper insulator rings. Super simple, you can get them uh, anywhere, anyhow, I don't know. Go to Amazon and type 18650 or 21700 insulator ring. That's it. That's all you need to do. They're very cheap. Do not omit this operation. Um, to me, that's super important. So, uh, like I said, this is a commercially available pack. The soldering's okay. Um, I This, to me, is done with an iron or a gun that is not hot enough for this specific job. So, um, if you can see, the wire 
is technically not fully seated against the button itself. It's kind of floating up in the solder. So I'm not talking trash about other manufacturers. This thing, uh, it's, a, it's a functional pack. It's just fine for um, cruising and flying and uh, you don't want to overload any of these lithium battery packs, obviously. But um, like I said, you can see it's kind of floating. It's not fully seated. I don't know. Maybe that's a personal thing. I don't like that. I like them to be all the way uh, seated. If you look back in my videos, you'll see that I have one on how I personally solder these. And you can really see how I do it. I use a very substantial iron. That's not on, don't worry. Uh, okay, <clears throat> after all that, this one was bare. I should probably take that off while I'm touching batteries. Uh, this was bare and then it had kept on tape. Then what they did was really cool um, I appreciate this is how I do it, except for I don't use the Kapton tape. I'll show you in just a second. This one had the Kapton tape, and then it had a sleeve of heat shrink this way, and it was shrunk, and then a sleeve of heat shrink this way, and then shrunk. Very nice dual layer protection. Absolutely do that. I always do that. Um, before the heat shrink, though, all this had was one layer of... Uh, electrical tape to hold the cell probably whenever they were hot gluing it um, but what I like to do is use what one wheel future motion uses it's a grid style of packing tape uh, fiberglass tape super strong if you were to crash these packs you will get very minimal uh, cell shifting so, now, speaking of the electrical tape, um, when I build a pack, each, each cell is protected from the next cell. These ones are hard to see. It's kind of in the middle there, but it, it's, it goes this way. Um, so there's a piece of tape in between each cell so that no cells can touch each other. Um, the reason for that is for any shell, uh, sorry, cell shifting, you don't want to tear the heat shrink around the individual cell. This is very thin heat shrink and tears easily. In fact, sometimes if you have really good hot glue, you can tear this heat shrink on the cell just by pulling glue off or by pulling other tape off. So if you have a crash and if you jar these cells loose, you are very, very, very likely to tear the heat shrink. If you tear this heat shrink, it, you have all these contact points that the cells could short themselves out against. Obviously bad. So simple, uh, electrical tape, PVC tape, whatever you call it. Um, you got to be careful. There are some tapes that are junk. This is ultra stretchy. This is something that I would not recommend. 3M tape is extremely stiff and it has very little flex, very little give, and it's actually a little thicker. N no actual stretch right this is what you want to use for ultimate protection so layers of protection in between each cell so that the cells don't touch each other insulator rings on top of every cell that way if something happens or if you crash one of these nickel strips is not going to come into contact between the anode and the cathode of the cell itself. Okay, lastly, I use a heavy fish paper 
instead of Kapton tape. Um, I use a heavy fish paper. It does cost a little bit more. It's not bad. Kapton tape is expensive anyway. So I use a heavy fish paper. I buy it in bulk. I buy giant rolls and go through it. Um, because if, if you crash and you strike something, let's say this pops off, you break a strap because they are kind of heavy. If you break a strap and hit a, a motor nut or something, I don't know, you could potentially short in between, right? So to me, this just gives you one additional layer of protection. So you have fish paper insulator rings, a fish paper cap, and the tape is really just there to hold the fish paper while you heat shrink it. Then I heat shrink this way and then heat shrink this way dual uh, layers of protection and they come out really good again i'm not talking trash about this commercially available pack i personally think they actually do a pretty decent job but we can always improve but for safety i do have to say uh, you know in school in in building large packs this is just one of those things that we always said was a no-no I, I know that Molly Cell and other manufacturers put a plastic ring here, but this is plastic. This is getting hot. This can melt out of the way. I've seen weird stuff happen in a crash. I've seen weird stuff happen during manufacturing. I've just seen bad things, and I would highly recommend that you over-insulate. Um, and then as far as the weight differences, whenever my packs are fully assembled, 420 to 425 grams, it's, it's the, it's the commercial average. There's, there's not enough difference to worry about it. The added amount of safety you get by adding these couple of things is worth the two or three grams that you're going to add. I assure you, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you.